Good morning, and thank you for joining us on our second to last series in the aging and the arts. I appreciate everyone's uh, participation, your um, questions that have been coming in, and also suggestions for a future program. We are very much appreciated. Today, um, we will be on the ground, so if you have a moment to go grab a mat and something comfortable, next week we will have a combination of mat and walking around. Thank you again, and I'll let Andrew take it from here. Thanks. Julia. Okay, so uh, today's uh, lesson has a theme of walking, but most of it's on the floor. Um, but I want to introduce a couple of concepts um, around the way your body is structured. And it's not really that technical, but it does inform uh, the way walking happens quite a lot. <clears throat> so we've often been getting up and off the floor at the end and standing, and then one of the most common comments is that I feel taller, right? Or I feel wider. And something that, not the only thing, but one thing that accounts for that is that the only thing muscles can do is pull two things together. That's how they work. So they have an attachment on one end, an attachment on the other end, the bicep pulls something towards something else. Okay, they can also release or stabilize, but I'm gonna oversimplify here, okay? So if you're holding a muscle you're actually pulling two bones together or two structures together. And you're leaving them pulled together. And what that means is, is that you um, are moving around with those two things held together. So you're stiffening your structure, okay? And I'm happy to take questions on this, Caitlin or Julia, who's ever back there, as we go. But today's lesson is really about the, in 45 minutes, I can't give you a whole series on walking, but I can give you some very small things that you can begin to pay attention to. And one is that walking is a very intricate series of turning. So your pelvis turns, your head turns, your chest turns, it's a twisting motion. Now, it's more than that. It's also a kind of falling, okay? So I'm going to ask you in a moment to begin to just walk around and notice, and I'm going to ask you to put your hands on different places and notice where you're turning. But the second thing I'm going to have you notice, and this is as much for, to, for after today's class as it is, uh, you know, for today, when I hear people walk around the house, like my sons, our sons, I often hear the, the striking, the hard striking of their heels. That is, a, is ultimately a result of them holding muscles together. Now, it doesn't have to be up and down muscles. It can also be turning muscles. And so the force of the strike is very forceful, and it's not very controlled. It's just boom, boom. So if you notice yourself doing that, some of what you can ask yourself to do in walking is simply to begin to notice where you might have this sideways movement a little bit. It could be up and down movement too, but today we're gonna to focus a little more on this turning movement. So take a walk around and notice what's turning. What's in your body? What's turning? So you guys can say it here so it's helpful. You can say it out loud. Hips. Your ribs? Your, yeah. your waist is turning. So your waist is turning, right? Your hips? Yeah. So put your hands on your pelvis somewhere and feel or see each other. Notice when I walk, my when I put my right foot forward, my right hand comes forward. When I put my left foot forward, my left hand comes forward. Now leave your hands down 
And notice, if you can, where do your hands, where do your arms go relative to your hips? So when your right hip comes forward, where's your left hand? So it's a diagonal. So try this weird thing. Try moving your right hip forward and your right hand forward. You see how you stay stiff like a board? Like who, nobody would walk like this, except for maybe like babies who, or you know, toddlers who are figuring it out. But this is sort of a weird like monster walk, right? <laughs> so if, you, if you're gonna take your hands and extend them, notice how that extension is a turning, it, it, like now just go back to the regular walking. Notice how this is a turning, where else do you turn when your arms reach in the natural way? The core, your, the core, your chest is turning back and forth. One more thing to notice in the turning. Take some turns. So go up to a mat or go up to, if you're at home, and notice where your eyes go and when they go there. So your eyes, when do your eyes make, the turn, make that turn? Before you turn, right? So your eyes lead the way. Now notice, put your hand on the back of your neck and track the back of your neck and your eyes when you're turning. Do you see? The back of your neck turns too. Now stiffen the back of your neck. Let your eyes go where they want to go. But do you see how the rest of you starts to flatten out like you can't turn if the back of your neck can't, won't turn? You follow? So now walk just one more thing. Just walk a little faster and notice, are you striking the floor hard? Don't change this, please. I can hear it. It's okay, it's not wrong but it will change by the end of the lesson. Okay, any questions so far, Julia? Or Caitlin? We good? No questions. Okay, all right, so lay down on your mat and you're gonna want, you're probably gonna want your socks on for this one because I'm gonna be at some point asking you to drag your feet along the floor let your legs go long and put some attention in your pelvis, the back of the pelvis. Feel which side of my pelvis has more weight. And notice what's happening on the knee on that side. So if it's your left side, how does your knee feel on that side? Does it feel turned? Does it feel close to the floor? Does it feel pulling away from the floor? And also notice your foot on that side. And then stay on whatever side feels more to the floor on the pelvis and notice what's happening in the small of your back on that side, just above the pelvis. Yeah, you can put your hand there if you need to. Now take your hand to the other side of the pelvis, to the side that's a little lifted off the floor or has less weight. Feel the knee on that side. Feel the leg on that side. Feel the foot on that side. And then feel what's happening in the small of your back on that side. Roll your head like ever so slightly to the left and to the right. And notice which side feels easier to roll to. Every single one of us, I'm going to guess, has a side that feels a little easier. Even though we're bio or structurally structurally symmet somewhat symmetrical. In use throughout our lives, we're not really symmetrical. 
And then feel the back of the shoulders and where those are in relationship to the floor. Okay, now with the feet about hip width apart. So Virginia, you want your feet a little bit further apart. There you go. So now, <clears throat> very, very small and simply turn the, hold on. Turn the right foot toward the outside edge. Just roll it smaller, small, 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 small. Turn the right foot toward the outside edge of the right foot. Yeah, it is already there, but you can turn it more. So you, we, start, we happen to start on the side of your pelvis that's oriented toward the floor a little more. So notice that in turning that toward the floor, put some awareness in the rest of your leg. And notice that the, it, it has an influence on the knee. Just, just very small and smooth. And notice how the femur, which is the bone, the very large bone going from your knee to your hip, there's a, that's uh, the largest bone in the body, it goes, it, uh, it turns inside the pelvis. Now, if you've had a hip replacement, this structure may behave a little bit differently, but it's still there. It's still a, the ability to turn the, the uh, femur. And notice the weight on the back of the pelvis. The pelvis is actually turning a little bit. When the right foot turns, the pelvis is turning. We might say that that right foot is carrying the femur. You're not actually turning your femur, you're initiating the, the turn with your foot and the femur's being carried. Okay, rest for a moment. Go back to the right foot turning and begin to feel <clears throat> that at a certain point, your knee, if you allow it, your knee could actually bend. I'm not saying bend the knee. I'm saying notice that in the carrying of the femur in the pelvis, there's a kind of a natural thing that could happen here. Possibility is that your knee would bend. And just do that as a measure of, um, with an awareness that it's comfortable and maybe even enjoyable. That you turn that foot out and that the knee bends. Yeah, yeah but not that far. You're like way ahead. <laughs> yep, there, that far. That's exactly where the thing is going. So feel that tendency of the knee to bend. Can you feel it? And rest. Now let's go to the left side and turn the left side the outside edge of the left foot to the outside. Just a little. 
But let this side have its time to, to sense what's happening. So feel, all along the leg, something's happening. You can't really, with your leg straight, turn your foot without your pelvis turning. I mean, I suppose you could turn it a little bit, that with the knee has a little bit of give. So turn that left foot and feel the femur being carried in the pelvis. If you want to really feel it, you can put your hands, one of your hands, right at the crease, at the fold between the leg and the, and the pelvis. And you can feel there's some action there. This is one of the differences between humans and many other mammals, is that many mammals cannot turn their pelvis <clears throat> like a moose runs through the snow. It doesn't have that lateral motion of the pelvis. It only has the up and down, but it really has the up and down so it can run through the snow. But humans have this ability to turn inside the pelvis. By the way, if you're a golfer or a tennis player, this action is a really good action to begin to, to learn because this pelvis, freeing up the pelvis, gives you a lot more power through it. So then begin to recognize that as that femur's turning, there's a possibility of the knee bending, just the tiniest bit. I'm not asking you to do anything wild here, just notice, oh, my knee bends. Oh, it just does it naturally. Take a little rest. And now do a little sensory sleuthing, like we're gonna see side to side what's different. So do a couple on the right side and a couple on the left side, same thing, femur turn, foot turning, femur turning, knee bending just a little, and then the left side. One might feel a little smoother, a little easier, a little different. And just notice that. That's an important noticing, particularly when we're gonna get up and walk around. You're gonna to wanna to notice which side of me, and really get it into your awareness, which side of me turns more easily habitually. Okay, rest for a moment. <clears throat> Take the palm of your left hand and put it on your forehead really, really lightly. And turn your forehead to the right, just lightly, okay. Now, at the same time as you turn your forehead to the right and back, turn your foot. Oh, sorry, right foot. I pointed at it and didn't say it. So, now notice if you lead that action with the foot, your head's actually being carried to the right, if you allow it to be. Do you feel this as a synchronous movement? No, no, 
No. Right, but you don't have to take it further. Just feel if there's anything can being communicated to the head. Nope. nope. Okay. So now take your left hand and put it on your forehead. Oh, sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Very confusing. Take your right hand, and now same thing. Turn your right foot, and but now turn your head to the left and feel. Does it feel different? to be turning your head in the opposite direction of your foot. Is there anything that's getting, um, that's inhibiting turning? To turn this way, when you're turning your foot to the left, to the right. Yeah. yeah. So let your hand go. Now turn your right foot a few times and just feel, does your head want to be carried to the right or to the left? We're working only on the turning of the right foot. And I get it, Ron, you're at the extension there. <clears throat> It'll, that'll change once we begin to bend the knee more. Okay, let that go. And rest for a moment. Turn the left foot to the outside edge of the left. Put your right hand on your forehead. And as you turn the foot out, turn the head in the same direction to the left. And now keep turning the left foot out, but switch the direction of the head and put your other hand on your head. Yeah. Yeah. So you're essentially twisting. Your left foot is going out to the left and your head's going to the right. Let it go. And now just do that without the hand. So turn the left foot to the left, turn the head to the left, and sense what's being communicated. Feel that femur turn in the pelvis. Feel the pelvis moving. and then feel to your head going the other way. Okay. Roll off to your side, come to sitting, and come to standing. Now, in the folds, sorry, here I am. In the folds of your, between your leg and your pelvis, you feel like that you can flatten that fold by putting your pelvis forward like this. You could, if you push it forward, that fold flattens out. Or you could push your pelvis backward and the fold gets a little more fold, folded. Okay, with it a little more folded, take your right foot and turn it just like this. Slide it. You can slide it from the heel 
being attached to the floor, or you can slide the whole thing. This is really what we're doing on the floor, right? And then do the same thing with the left. Now, sit into this fold a little more. This is not Feldenkrais, what I'm doing right now. This is a whole other practice. <laughs> sit into the floor a little more, and then feel that you get a little sponginess in here. You get, if you soften these folds a little bit, it makes it easier to turn. I'm not suggesting that I want you walking around like this. I'm suggesting that if you soften the relationship between your pelvis and your legs, it makes it much easier for you to walk. So now with your hands still there, walk around a little bit and feel in some turning, what happens if you pay attention to that softness in those folds? And then feel, what does it feel like if you flatten or stiffen those folds. Do you feel how your legs become like you, you're pounding the ground more? It's a heel strike. It's a heel strike. So this is one of those indications of if we have soft folds and this soft turning relationship in our pelvis, it's a great thing to become aware of as you're walking, let's say, to the gym or is can I find a softness in these folds? Anything else you notice when you soften the folds? How about your breathing? Your movement's more efficient, right? Yeah, yeah. And look, you don't have to sit to soften the folds. You can really, it's very small. What I'm teaching you here is from a different form that's often taught in ballet and jazz and modern dance. It's a releasing form, but this is a really essential place, this uh, fold between them. Okay, so now lay back down on your back. Can you leave the fold soft while you're laying down? Is it possible? <laughs> it's hard, right? But you, you don't really think about it. It's like, oh, it's just the connection between my legs and my... By the way, if you have a lot of knee pain, softening these folds will give your knee some... Um, Ability to be flexible, let's put it that way. It gives it more movement patterns possible, possible. Okay, hands out to the side. Take the right foot, tip it to the right. Feel, and let's really put attention on the knee bend now. Right foot bending out to the right. And pay attention, that knee, and let the knee bend. Just let it bend. Now, if you're here on a hard floor, I'm gonna do this with you, Virginia. You, I'm gonna ask you in a moment to begin to allow that knee to bend. Can you just lift your feet up? There we go. And it might become easier if you pull your mat up. And then as she just did, when you turn your foot out and the knee bends, you can begin to slide the heel up but allow that knee to really go out to the side. Instead of, don't tip it over and then stop and then just pull your knee up like this. Just let the thing go out all the way, as far as it can. And if you wanna drag it up on the mat, that's fine. If, you wanna, if it's easier to drag it on the floor, that's fine too. So now just see how far is easy for me to allow that. Always start it with the turning of the foot. Always start it with the turning of the foot. 
Notice the habit of, the, of mind to think that the goal is to bend my knee. But I'm teaching you a sequence that is about the foot turning and the knee and the foot dragging. Let that go. Let the legs go long. And now start with the left. And notice, if I tip the foot to the left, the knee will begin to bend. This is how we're all made. And that knee, that left knee bending, as it bends, I can begin to drag the foot toward my abdomen. That's it. Now, as you're dragging that left foot, put your hand in the left fold between the abdomen and the leg and see what happens if I think of softening that fold. Does it help me to do anything? And where your palm is, well, Above there, think in the bottom of your abdomen, the muscles in the bottom of your abdomen. Feel, can I soften those or do I really need those to bring my knee up? You don't actually. What we're doing here can be done largely from some rotator muscles and some internal muscles like the, well, don't, don't worry about it. It's it, muscles attached from your spine to your leg. So now, do the same thing on the right, where you turn the foot, feel the fold, soften the fold, and feel the abdomen too, and soften the abdomen. This lesson is called frog legs. All right, rest for a moment. Just le lengthen your legs and rest. Andy? Yeah. I have a question that came in. If one softens the hip fold by tilting the top of pelvis forward, doesn't that alter one's upright posture? If one person, if you tip the top of the pelvis forward, doesn't that alter one's posture? Yes, it does. And it alters the curve of your spine. But it's a question of degree, and without looking at the person, I can't, there's nothing I can say definitively about any one part of the body being moved like that. I, what I would recommend from where that question came from is when we get back to standing, play with the position of the pelvis and the relative fold of the leg. Okay, so now we're going to look for above the pelvis what might get simpler or easier to allow this frog leg action to happen. So we're going to put attention on the abdomen and the chest and the shoulders. So start with the right leg, turn it to the right, and put your left hand toward the ceiling, straighten out, and feel. Can that left hand tilt to the right? Can the, can the shoulder tilt to the right? So what I'm doing here is giving you a sense of, can your chest turn 
as your pelvis is turning, can it get carried? Turn, fold the leg, yeah. And then once you sense that something above your pelvis is turning, put your hand down and let it turn. Put your hand down and turn the right leg, frog leg up, and just now just do the same thing, only feel there are things above there that can turn to help this action. So if you feel like you can't really turn on that side, it's not in your hip generally. It's generally somewhere above your hip that is keeping your hip from turning. So where can you be seen really? Uh, well here, can you see? Or can you, it's easier to see, who is this, Ron. So in Ron, if, if this, where his hand is, is sort of the center of his pelvis, put your hand at the top of your pelvis, there. So the leg, the pelvis is attached to our bodies in two places, right? It's up here, oh, it's more than two, but just at this side of the hip, it's here, and it's down on the bottom of it. So we think if I need to move my pelvis, I should be able to move my pelvis. But there's two areas where it could be inhibited, above and below, right? So it's easy to focus on below. Oh, I gotta get my, my leg unstuck. But maybe what has to happen is to get something up here unstuck to allow the pelvis to move. And that's up to you to begin to feel, as I'm turning that right foot, how can my shoulders, chest, ribs, begin to soften, back of the neck, begin to soften to allow me to move more. And you might not get that today, but it's a good awareness to have. Do the same thing on the left. Let the frog leg begin to happen and begin to notice, no, sorry, put the right hand up. Let the left leg turn and feel that right hand going in the direction and feel the shoulder move and feel the head move. That's it, Ron. Just keep exploring because your arm is moving. So there's movement through between here to there. That's it. So now put the hand down and feel that movement still rolling the left foot and sliding the left foot. Feel the movement above. Don't worry if you're not getting the full length of this movement. This is a quick, we're, we're already at 20 minutes left in the lesson. And I'm trying to track you through so you could do it at home a little bit after the lesson. So rest for a moment. Okay, so now we're gonna tilt the right foot. We're gonna drag it up. But now I want you to take your hands, interlace them behind your head and keep your head still. And drag the right foot up and feel with an immobile head, 
What does it feel like to drag the right foot up? Do it a few times so that your head cannot turn. The spine really is mobile in the tops of the spine. And then do a few on the left. And now let your head go free and do a few on the right. And feel, is there anything different? When your head is free, is there anything different? I'm curious, is there anything different in the class here? So what I find different is that when I'm locked behind my head, I almost have a sense the law rolls towards the ear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You because you're wanting to stay stiffened up here. Right. I'm not as anchored. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. It keeps you as one piece. So you want to roll as a log. Anybody else? Is it different? How is it different, Virginia? Without locking the head, it's much more fluid. F fluid. And she's po she says without locking the head, it's much more fluid. And she pointed to here. So somewhere in her abdomen, it gets more fluid. Is that, am I? Yeah, and when it's locked, it's, it's more of a stretch arch of the spine. Yeah, it's more like up-down arch. And for Ron, it's, when it's locked, it's more like a promoted, like a log roll. Like you're a stiff one thing. Yeah, when my head is locked, my whole upper body gets tense. So when her head is locked, her whole upper body gets tense. And that, does that influence the legs? Start to notice it. Start to notice it. Become aware of how your upper body influences and is carried and is actually participating in a walking action. Okay, rest for a moment. Okay. Take the turn the right foot and now if you do not get to this place where I'm gonna ask you where the exercise goes, where the lesson goes, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter even a little bit. There's no rewards after the lesson or in a year or at the end of your life, nobody's gonna give you a gold star saying, remember that lesson, frog's legs? You didn't do that one thing or you did it really well. There are no awards for this. So look for the possibility, go ahead, drag that right foot, turn the right foot, drag it up. Look for the possibility that quite naturally that foot will stand. It's just easy. And see how it happens quite easily and naturally from the side. And put your hand in that fold and see, is there anything I can do in my abdomen or in that fold, that pocket fold, to allow it to become softer, to allow that standing action to happen? Could you clarify what you mean by standing? Standing the foot on the floor. So drag the foot up. Oop, yeah, but drag it out to the side. Roll it out to the side. See what she just did, can you do what you just did? Is simply bend the knee. You can always stand the foot like that, but what we're asking you to do is to turn the foot, feel the fold in the knee, drag the lit foot up, and find the stand. Here, look at Virginia when she does it here. She's allowing it to 
Go the other direction, let the foot go down. It's the same pattern there, roll, turn, leg goes up, foot stands because it's right there for you, okay? That's it. And all you are doing is bypassing, like you're just folding to stand, okay? Now do a few of those on the left side. See if the standing is there. It might not be there at all. That's great, Ron. That's great that you're taking your time to go slowly with this. And that is a lot of improvement on that side. So fold and look, turn the foot out. Feel that you could stand. And now really pay attention when you're bringing that uh, foot up, pay attention to the back of your neck, to allowing your neck and shoulders to be free. The next time you let that left leg down, pull the right one up. So now we're just gonna alternate. Right one up, standing, and then as that one goes down, the left one goes up. Put your hand somewhere on the back of your neck and feel, uh, yeah, you, I'm sorry, put one hand just to feel the back of the neck can turn. Maybe even to massage it a little bit so it softens. Just feel that this alternating one, the other, can be a soft thing above, because you can do it with a lot of force in your upper spine. That's it, that's it, beautiful. And now take your hand away and just move your neck, let it go free. And now do it a little faster. It's sort of like you're cycling. Don't forget to turn on the way up, turn that foot. Like it's like a swimming kick, that's right. It's like a frog kick in swimming. Except we're, we're still alternating. We're not yet at the frog kick. You got it, Ron. A little faster. Just feel, I have this freedom for one leg to come up and stand and then the other leg to come up and stand. One leg to come up and stand and the other leg to come up and stand. And rest for a moment. And now go back to that, right one, then the other, one, then the other for a few times. And the leg standing, and then it goes down, and then the other comes up and passes it. That's it. Feel your neck can be free, your shoulders can be free. And now at some point, and this is harder, to do, pull both of them up at the same time and feel, can I do this while remaining soft in those folds and in my abdomen? So if you wanna put your hands there to sort of go, hmm, what is he asking me to do and how might I be able to do that? And while you're doing this, pulling both the legs up, roll the head left and right, just a little bit. Just. Pull both up at the same time and roll the head left and right, a little faster even. Just roll the head left and right. Just to remind yourself that you could do this with a lot of effort through your spine, or you could do it quite freely. And a little faster if you'd like. That's it, Ron, yep.
Okay, lengthen your legs and rest. And feel in this rest what might feel different than when you first laid down. Shoulders, abdomen, small of the back. I skipped a few directions in this one because we ran out of time where you pay attention to the small of your back, pushing toward the floor or away from the floor. So there's another action in this lesson. Roll off to the side. See, there it is, the frog leg, Becca. See that? It's right there. It's in that first lesson. Yep. And come to standing. Now walk around and let's talk about, does anything feel different in your walking? So you can say this, or do you feel different in the length of you? You can say it out loud here, if there's anything that feels different. It feels softer. She says it feels softer. You like your feet feel softer? Yeah. I can actually hear that or feel it in you. Yeah? It feels more like a gliding. Uh-huh. feels like a gliding. Uh-huh. So if you work out on a gym machine, a lot of them do glide, essentially glide, like on an elliptical, has a gliding. Think for a softer glide, think softening right here and the ability to turn. So now in turning, see what feels different in turning. Does anything feel different in the whole length of you in turning? The movement feels more open. The movement feels more open? What does that mean, open? It means that uh, the experience is broader, it's less stiff, uh -uh. relaxed, yeah. uh, engaged uh -huh. uh, throughout the whole body. Throughout the whole body. Uh -huh. So now I'm going to answer a few questions that I predict you have. And I'm going to give you, if you all could stay standing, I'm going to give you a few um, images that can be really helpful. So one is, the, is the, to return to the question of where are your hips relative to your feet? So uh, someone said, if I tilt my pelvis one way or another, there's no perfect position of your pelvis. The, 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 your pelvis sits between the legs and the feet and above. So I can't just say put your pelvis here because it's relative to everything else, right? But I can say the bottom of your pelvis, the sitting bones, one image I can give you, so you know, you know your sitting bones, right? We talked about when you're sitting, you can feel those pressing into the... Think that there's um, strings attached to the sitting bones or even to the top of the pelvis. Can you turn around? Even to these two points on the top of the pelvis, but you could also attach them to the sitting bones and that those strings have ball bearing weights that go directly down into your heels. Directly into your heels. So feel that if my pelvis sinks into my heels, straight down into my heels, that softens this. You feel? And then feel that the back of your head is somehow also has a line that goes down into, those, into the pelvis. So it, it sort of has two strings that go into the pelvis this way. Now this is not a posture. I mean, we're, we're here, but this is a dynamic thing. So if your head's always forward, like push your head forward so those strings are way forward. Feel how your pelvis can, can't move really in walking. A lot of people, they, they don't walk this far forward, but a lot of people walk this far forward and suddenly they have to adjust everything below. 
So if you adjust and allow yourself to feel this softness here and the softness in the back of the neck so the head can line up over the pelvis, you're gonna feel a kind of like, it's not a perfect alignment, we're not after that. We're after a dynamic, balanced thing that you can move through. Feel that your head drops into your pelvis and the back of your pelvis drops into your heels. And the back of your neck is soft when you're doing this. Back of the head drops into the back of the pelvis. Back of the pelvis drops into the heels. And everything begins to turn with those strings just vibrating and turning with you. I want to stress again, this is not a right position. But if I take my head and I lean it forward, even a little bit, or lean it down, it's hard to get that pelvis to sink and, f and have the folds. I'm happy to answer questions about this next week as we go into next week's lesson as well. And just to prepare you, if you've been a regular, or even if not, next week is the last lesson, so I'm gonna give a slightly shorter lesson and then leave a little time for questions throughout the lesson. Any questions from here? Okay, thank you.